There are some fantastic gems in here. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome to another bundle banter. Hell yeah! This time we got one coming in from Fanatical, and it is your own pick and mix type of bundle. It's called the Build Your Own Lockdown Bundle. Now this will be the first time that I've covered a pick and mix bundle, largely because there are just so many fucking games in it that it was, it was quite a task to uh, cover each one of them. But I think I did it amicably, and that is why this video is so very long. So before I cover each of these games, let's go ahead and look what you can pick from this bundle. You can pick one game for a dollar, you can pick five games for three dollars, or you can pick ten games for five dollars, which is really awesome. What are the games? We've got Face Rig, Skullgirls the base game, Skullgirls second encore upgrade, Among the Sleep enhanced edition, Enemy Front, Dex enhanced version, Republic, The Signal from Tova, Old Man's Journey, Who's Your Daddy, The Last Leviathan, Alien Rage, Port Royale 3, Dungeons 2, Shuyan Saga, Tropico 3 Steam Special Edition, Nihilumbra, Pony Island, Chaos Reborn, Patrician 4, World's Dawn, Dungeons the Original, and The Hex. That is a whole lot of games. 23 games, of which you can pick 10 for only $5. Which is really sweet. Some of these games actually are worth picking. Some of them, <laughs> stay far away from them. We'll cover which is which. You'll be able to tell which ones I like. So let's jump in and break down each of these games individually. Face Rig! What? What is this? Uh, this is game? I have seen game. Th this is not game. <laughs> Shout out to John Tron. But you know, it's still pretty good at what it does. If you're looking to transform yourself into, well, basically anything at all, then Face Rig can make that happen for a price. I think it'd be a lot cooler if it mapped your actual face and changed your skin texture and added the horns or whatever, but it really isn't that advanced. I don't know if any technology is for that matter. <laughs> face rig basically maps your head, identifies your mouth and eyes, and pastes them to a model that will mimic your movements and expression to varying degrees of accuracy. There are probably some uses for this, but I don't think I'd ever use it personally. If you're streaming, then you should probably just show your face, even if you're a ham beast. Maybe some of your subscribers will be ham beasts and applaud you for showing your face, even though you're a ham beast. Now I've said ham beast too many times, <laughs> so I have to move on. To Skullgirls! This is a fighting game that is very easy to learn and extremely difficult to master. The multiplayer community is surprisingly not completely dead after this game has been on the market for almost seven years. That is quite impressive for an indie title. Even if you aren't in it to get your ass kicked by a 1,000 hour veteran, you can have a decent amount of fun in the single player mode. The characters are all extremely unique, and the animations are just mwah, icing on the cake. There is some recent drama regarding updates to remove like 10 panty shot frames to please some SJW jagoffs that have probably never even played this game in the first place, but whatever. I don't think a little bit of drama is really a good reason to promote or bash a title. Skullgirls is a fun fighting game, period. Skullgirls Second Encore Upgrade. Now this is the type of DLC that I am absolutely okay with. It includes five new characters, a fully voiced story mode, a new stage, a set of trials to help you master the game, and a survival mode to really test your mettle. Could they have broken all that up and sold it separately? Surely, and I probably would have blasted them over it. Instead, you get all of this for one low price. And you really can't ask for more than that. Among the Sleep Enhanced Edition! The world is fucking scary for a baby. And Among the Sleep does a great job of putting you in those shoes. Or footy pajamas. Anyways, I'm surprised how well this game works, honestly. It tells a good story with an engaging atmosphere that lets you play around with the environment to a huge degree. Top all that off with some haunting music and audio and you're good to go. While you can easily tear through the game in two hours, it took me around five. I was really getting into my role as the baby, picking up and touching everything that I could. It's not a jump scare type of game, thank god, but it does just create so much atmosphere. And at the end, the story hits a home run. Super powerful stuff. It can bring a tear to your eye, particularly for me because of my own past traumas. You should definitely play it. 
Who's your daddy? On the opposite end of the baby game spectrum, <laughs> we have Who's your daddy? Which is basically a giant flaming bag of donkey dicks. One player is the baby and tries to commit suicide. The other player is the dad and attempts to stop their progeny from offing themselves. It might actually be fun if the art style was at all nice to look at, and if the bugs were fixed, and if the controls worked decently, and if the sound work weren't total crap, and all those things might have come to fruition if the devs hadn't abandoned this stale meme of a game. Stay far away from it, and do not soil your Steam library with this turd. Enemy Front Cheap derivative schlock that makes claims far bigger than it can ever hope to back up. Open world, really? Because to me it seems like a series of linear pathways with a couple of side branches that hold nothing but a few ammo crates. Destructible environments? Huh. You mean that one building in that one destroy the building objective? Try placing the explosives on other buildings. It does nothing. The goggles do nothing. If the game simply advertised itself as what it is, I might not even have a bone to pick. The guns feel nice, the visuals are alright, and the story is dripping in B-movie cheese, which honestly seems pretty intentional. If you're looking for a nice dumb corridor shooter, then Enemy Front will probably please. Just don't let the store page fool you about it being anything more than that. Dungeons 2. Build a base. Explore some dungeons. Build up an army of troops. This is good old Dungeon Keeper style fun. The multiplayer is... A mess, <laughs> but if you're in it for the single player experience, then you'll probably be quite pleased. Dungeons 2 focuses mostly on troop management, however, so if you're expecting to lay out a bevy of traps for those unsuspecting adventurers, then you might end up disappointed. Overall, this game has a very nice RTS feel to it, and it even features two different factions to mix things up. You can play as the Horde or as Demons, with each faction playing slightly differently. It's nice. The game lacks some explanation, but it's easy enough to pick up. All in all, a fun little romp. Old Man's Journey, an atmospheric puzzle adventure that more people should have the pleasure of experiencing. The older I get, the more I start to appreciate games that illustrate the aging process. You play as an old man going on a journey. Duh. <laughs> From time to time, the old man will take a break and look back on past events in his life. And that's where the actual story takes place. The tale is told only in pictures, but this works shockingly well. It reminds me of the beginning of Up. Yes, I cried. Don't at me. The visuals are stunning. The audio is memorable. The puzzles are logical and well designed. There's really not much to dislike about this game aside from how quickly it's all over. Republic. Point and click. Uh, cyberpunk? Ooh. Stealth game. Hmm. What is it about stealth games with cyberpunk settings? I guess it makes it easier to insert a dystopian narrative or something. And this game does. And I kinda like it. Even if it's ground that has been tread endless times before. Republic is a mobile port. But for a mobile port, it actually holds up pretty well. The camera gets placed in strange positions at times. And point and click is probably the worst choice that somebody could have made for a stealth game. But I applaud the effort. Unfortunately, the story does fall apart at the climax and resolves itself with a whimper, and the characters themselves are mm, forgettable at best. It's an interesting take on the stealth genre, but overall, I probably wouldn't recommend it unless you're looking for something purposefully different. Port Royale 3! Born too early to explore space, born too late to explore the planet and establish a global trading company. Or was I? Port Royale 3 is a shipborne economy simulator. It's an interesting take, and I like the choice of putting it on the water, mostly because it means you'll be sending some pirates to Davy Jones' locker! Arr! <laughs> you can control multiple fleets, complete missions, and build reputations with four different factions. I was hoping for a worldwide game, but just sailing around the Caribbean and finding good deals in order to price gouge neighboring islands, it's a pretty nice feeling. As always, I just love to see those numbers go up. Port Royale 2 is apparently the better title, but not having played that one, I was able to fully enjoy the management of my fleet without noting all of the things that went missing between the second and third entry. Signal from Tolva. Oh, yes. Fucking beautiful. And criminally unrecognized. Think of Signal from Tolva as like a Far Cry light 
with robots. It's an open world first person shooter with more atmosphere than you can shake a stick at. Combat is pretty difficult and you'll never feel like a one man army. You'll need to recruit different robot factions to fight alongside you. With that said, the combat does lack some depth. Almost all of the weapons feel nearly identical, but for me this game was much more about the atmosphere and the narrative. And both are done, ugh, flawlessly. Narrative isn't told directly. Instead, you'll need to piece together dialogue, visual clues, and the shreds of lore that are strewn about Tolva. This allows a lot of room for personal interpretation. Two people can come away with completely different messages about the story, and I think that that is a narrative style that needs to be explored more. Do yourself a favor, check out this game. Dex, indie side-scrolling cyberpunk RPG that is done yeah, extremely well. It isn't as polished as some of the more popular titles, which is probably why it ends up in bundles endlessly. The combat is a little wonky, and the little hacking minigame is, ugh, often an interruption that's more trouble than it's worth. The story and the characters are passable, and I really do like that they're all fully voice acted. The thing that won me over the most is the open world. Yes, it is a real RPG game. You can explore the city and complete quests at your leisure, level up your skills, it truly shows that Dex is a labor of love. For every time that the ball was dropped here, there are two other instances that easily score at some points. Definitely worth a try. The Last Leviathan. Why did nobody tell me about this? It's besieged, but on a boat! It's from the depths, but it's not as terrible to look at! You're supposed to float around and fight monsters and enemy ships, but... It kind of got left in the lurch with very little of that implemented, and you're basically just left tooling around a sandbox. Building a ship is cool, and the realistic weight means that unbalanced weapons and armors can tip your ship over, but once you get all equipped and ready for combat, you'll discover the true rub. Combat feels stale. I did find very few enemy ships, but there are no monsters to fight like the store page promised me. And best of all, it seems to be abandoned! There have not been any updates in a very, very long time. If you feel like upgrading and building a ship, and then sailing through a sandbox in search of some overall disappointing combat, then be my guest. But this ain't the one for me, and I guess it's no surprise that I hadn't heard of it. Nihilumbra! I think that there are a lot of people who take one look at this game, and assume they know exactly what to expect from it. The inky protagonist screams, I'M A LIMBO CLONE! And we've seen an endless number of these shadowy, dark games, largely due to the success of Limbo. But despite the similarities in art style, Nihilumbra is very much its own creature. It's a puzzle platformer that allows you to paint with five colors that will allow you to stick and bounce and slide and so much more. It's ingeniously put together, with great atmosphere and an enjoyable story. The story's short, but... There's also a second mode unlocked after completing the story, which is devilishly difficult. <laughs> Delightfully devilish. This is a game that taught me to never judge a book by its cover. It is far more than it seems. Shuyan Saga. A graphic novel that springs to life with 3D combat. An interesting prospect, but how well is it pulled off? Well, I really like the story. It's steeped in Chinese mythology, and I'm weak for all kinds of mythos. The combat, however, leaves quite a bit to be desired. I don't think an indie studio really considered how much work needs to go into a real fighting game. It feels like they came up with the concept, realized that real combat would be a total bitch to pull off, and so we ended up with mouse controls. In a fighting game. Mouse controls. I'll say it again for the people in the back. Mm, mouse controls. <laughs> you aim with the mouth, head, or body. Hard or soft blows are determined by how long you hold the button. I do want to like it for the story alone. It's very obviously an indie labor of love, but in the end, ugh, the story just wasn't enough to hold up the combat. Alien Rage. Is this Doom? Is this Bullet Storm? Alien Rage? What the fuck? Oh well. You can never really have too many arena shooters, am I right? If Doom is the daddy and Bulletstorm is the son, then Alien Rage is that methed out cousin that nobody likes. It's not a terrible game, slightly difficult considering the enemies eat bullets for breakfast, but they can tear you apart in just a few shots, but if you're looking to just run around and shoot some stuff, 
Alien Rage pulls it off extremely well for a title that released all the way back in 2013. There are 14 missions, a few collectibles along the way, everything that you'd expect. It is kind of loud and dumb, but it's just the kind of game that embraces what it is, and I gotta give it respect for that. Chaos Reborn. Ooh! Turn-based wizard tactics from the creators of the original XCOM game. Oh, I think I just came a little. How did this game ever escape my radar? Oh, because I'm always on my own fucking program and never focus on new game releases? Well, good point. As you'd expect from anything related to XCOM, you will live and die by the RNG. Spells can fail. You might win if you take that early 10% chance to summon a mighty dragon on the first turn, but if it fails, then that turn was wasted. You're probably better off summoning a few grunts to minimize the risk on those coin flip casts. You can also summon illusions to psych out your opponent. It is the best parts of wizardry, wrapped up in a package that I can't help but drool over. In most strategy games, you just beat your opponent into the ground. In Chaos Reborn, you leave your opponent questioning the nature of reality. It's so good. It's just so good. I'll buy that for a dollar. Pony Island. Toby Fox be damned. I want to see more Daniel Mullins fanboys out here. In Pony Island, you're trapped inside an arcade machine designed by the devil. You'll need to repair said machine. It's not a game about ponies, but I absolutely love how the title alone manages to subvert the player's expectations. It's a work of pure genius that I can't really describe. It has lo-fi potato graphics, but that adds to the atmosphere and the story, and it switches up between action and puzzles, and it doesn't overstay its welcome, in and out in two hours. It gets very dark at some points, but it is absolutely a ride worth taking. Do yourself a big favor, and play this one if you haven't already. World's Dawn, Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley, World's Dawn. Two steps forward, one step back. I don't know. It isn't the worst thing that I've ever played, but it didn't exactly vibe with me. Where Harvest Moon and Stardew focus more on the farming side of things, World's Dawn seems to be focused on relationship building, which is fine. The 32 characters within are all likable and well written, but I personally wouldn't spend a ton of time playing this when Stardew is sitting right over there. But I guess if you run Stardew into the ground, or simply want a bit of a different vibe, then World's Dawn can serve your needs nicely. The Hex! A genre-breaking tour de force from the creator of, that's right, Pony Island. It deals with the existential dread of being an NPC. You'll delve into the backstory of many different characters, and with each of those backstories comes a different style of gameplay. It's a very meta game that both criticizes and hails video games. It goes into a bit of game design philosophy and deals with various tropes among the genres. Daniel Mullins has made two masterpieces back to back, and honestly they deserve so much more than being bundle fodder. The gameplay itself isn't much to come back to, but the experience and the narrative, ugh, there's just nothing else like it. Dungeons. Compared to Dungeons 2, I'd say probably don't bother with this one. Very few quality of life additions make this game show its age, and the gameplay feels a lot like an uphill climb. Oh, you set up some traps and monsters? That's nice, you'll still need to activate them manually. Shouldn't there be like a switch or a tripwire that makes these things go off? Ugh. Am I the lord of this dungeon, or am I just some piddly middle manager? I want to build an autonomous deadly dungeon, not need to manage every little bit and bob. Dungeons 2 did it better. There were no traps in Dungeons 2, but controlling creatures to kill adventurers makes sense and feels good. Controlling traps, it just does nothing but piss me off. Oh, also, you'll need to sign up with a Calypso account, so God knows who they're selling your email to. Fuck that. Tropico 3, a strategy city builder set in the tropics. You can manage the island as you see fit, but you'll also need to deal with rebels if your people don't like the direction that things are headed. You'll also have the USA and Russia to contend with, as they both periodically move in and try and install their own dictatorship. What do I owe you? Nothing. It's for free. <gasps> free! You can become an industrial powerhouse and produce nothing but oil and cigars. Or you can be the titan of tourism, and lure outsiders in with good times and nice hotels. 
Leaning too far in one direction is bound to piss off one section of the populace or another. Balancing between pleasing the religious people and the military is a challenge, but if you can rise to meet it, then you will thrive as El Presidente. Patrician 4. Remember Port Royal? All that trading done in the Caribbean? Well, this is that, only set in Northern Europe. That's pretty alright, I guess. You get to go on land in addition to sea, but I think this was somewhat of a mistake. The naval combat doesn't feel anywhere near as good as it does in Port Royal 3. Again, you'll also need a Calypso account to play even the single player mode, which is just ludicrous. While kicking around Northern Europe in the Renaissance period, making loads of gold sounds great, it just doesn't pan out as well as one would hope. If you'd like to do some laid back trading and kill a bunch of pirates, skip this one and snag Port Royal 3 instead. So what do I think of this bundle? I think there is some amazing stuff in here. There's also some <laughs> objective garbage games, but you know, you can buy whatever you want from the bundle, which is super sweet. So you can skip over any of the stuff you don't like. You can even just pay a dollar and walk away with the one game that you wanted, which I think is totally awesome. As for which games to pick, hmm, Face Rig is pretty nice if you want to pretend to be an anime girl, I guess, on your webcam. <laughs> Not for me personally, but I can see some people getting use out of it. Skullgirls, if you like that fighting game vibe. And then there's, of course, the DLC upgrade for that, which is pretty worth it. Among the Sleep is super nice. Skip Who's Your Daddy, objectively. Enemy Front, it's kind of a dumb corridor shooter, but sure, if you're into that. Dungeons 2, I like it a lot. Got that Warcraft 2 or 3 kind of vibe where you just kill, build a dungeon and kill a bunch of adventurers. Super nice. Old Man's Journey, fantastic narrative. Republic, mm, probably skip. It's interesting, but <laughs> it definitely makes some uh, stumbles along the way. Port Royale 3, really nice if you like that strategy management style and stacking up some gold. Signal from Tolva, oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> Don't sleep on Signal from Tolva. Dex is really nice as well. Last Leviathan looks to be abandoned wear, and in the end, it just doesn't hold up for me. Nihil Umbra, that's a really good one. Shuyan Saga, skip it. Alien Rage, uh, I don't know. How many arena, how many arena shooters does one person need? I'll probably end up giving it a skip. Uh, you can get it cheaper than a dollar from certain places, so I, I wouldn't fill up a space in the bundle with that. Chaos Reborn, oh my god, best thing ever. <laughs> get it, get it. Pony Island, same story, get it. World's Dawn, it's definitely a good game if you're into that farming simulator type of feel. Uh, but yeah, we've got Stardew Valley around, so I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to you. The Hex is also just a masterpiece. And then Dungeons, Patrician 4, and Tropico 3 can all probably be safely skipped. Um, Tropico 3 is kind of nice if you're on a budget because it plays basically exactly the same as Tropico 4 and 5. So if you want to play Tropico 5, but uh, only have a dollar, then Tropico 3 is decent enough, I guess. So overall, what do I think of this bundle? I think there are some fantastic gems in here. Uh, you would be just a fool to, to skip over a lot of this stuff. There's also some trash, but it's relatively easily sorted through. So yeah, take what you like, leave what you don't. It's, it's really just a fantastic deal. So as always, hats off to Fanatical. They've been doing a great job with the bundle game. Killing it recently. Humble better watch out. That's all I'm going to say. And now as always, friends, I thank you so much for listening. I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. Let me know what you did with this bundle. Which games did you pick up? Did you disagree with my thoughts on some things? If you say that you like Who's Your Daddy, then we can go outside and fight right now. <laughs> uh, check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. We've got giveaways going on the Discord. I'd like to thank all of my patrons, Radimus Cisco, Damon Darkstar, Nico the Legend, and the newest member, Lady Nix. Thank you so much for supporting the Dayton Do. We will be back again, probably with another bundle banter. Hopefully with some, some gameplay stuff. I've been trying to get that together, but uh, the, the Switch has just consumed my soul. I've been playing on console largely recently. So hopefully sometime here soon, I'll, I'll get the mental fortitude to sit down and actually record something on Steam. Or maybe get a capture card. I don't know. Hopefully, uh, sooner rather than later so that I can share those gaming adventures with you guys. I know I've got some people in the Discord asking for that. So it's on the list, trust me. We just need the capital to make it come to reality. But anyways, thank you as always for listening, friends. This has been Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Date, your humble narrator with the fanatical lockdown bundle. I shall see you in the next one, whatever it is. 
So until the next time, friends, bye-bye.